Hello dear fans, friends and subscribers, welcome to this cricket happening show and on this cricket happening show I'll be looking at the Border Gavaskar Trophy series which is definitely going to be concluding tomorrow and we will be knowing the winner of this match. Well as far as right now we are going into day 4 uh, today, uh, day 4 of the Border Gavaskar Trophy series in the final test match where the Aussies were actually bowled out for 132 thus setting the Indians, 137 in fact 105 runs for victory, 19 runs have already been scored without losing a wicket by the op Indian openers and now India are just 87 runs away from taking the Border Gavaskar trophy <coughs> well, what a way um, this uh, test series has been it has been an accelerating test series I would say and tomorrow um, from right now one can definitely say that India are favourites unless the pitch is really going to play some truant I would say but I'll be looking into that game and I'll be giving you a sort of a report <coughs> I mean as a summary as you know there's a lot of cricket happening so definitely I have to juggle this and I can tell you that yesterday for India Umesh Yadav was the hero bold with pace and bowled with lots of control and he was someone a very difficult customer to deal with for the Aussies um, so that was a <coughs> very refreshing thing to happen and Umesh Yadav is definitely coming of age as a pace bowler now for India so that is something I'll be looking at on the third day's play and uh, the next thing that I'll be looking at is yesterday uh, we saw that uh, the, the first T20 match uh, well, as I'm talking to you here, I can. I am going to take you live to uh, to the to to uh, uh, Seddon Park in Hamilton because a wicket has fallen there. Mitchell Santner has just been dismissed. Actually, it was a ball from Kagiso Rabada which was angling away, one could say. And uh, in fact, um, uh, Santner has actually meekly pushed at it and Dumini has taken a very good catch at Gully and Santner is gone caught Dumini bowled Rabada for 41 as the score <coughs> right now reads uh, New Zealand 397 for 6 there 83 runs in the lead no doubt about it uh, but, uh, in reply to South Africa 314 we are on lunch right now as the wicket has fallen uh, lunch has been taken at the Seddon Park in Hamilton with the New Zealand score reading 397 for 6 Watling is not out 6 I'll come back to that uh, later um, and uh, I'll be talking about just because the wicket fell uh, I came to you right away and uh, and, and that is uh, lunch as far as uh, uh, the Southern Park in Hamilton is concerned so we'll revisit that later and also the first T20 uh, between West Indies and Pakistan uh, was played yesterday and uh, Pakistan won by six wickets and the hero was the youngster uh, he was blooded in this particular T20 match and what a spell! He bowled a dream spell on his on his on his T20 debut. His name is Shadab Khan. He's a right-arm leg spinner. Did very well in the Pakistan Super League, and here he really came up trumps. In fact, he he totally, totally, I would say, mesmerized the West Indian batting lineup. He, he took some key wickets uh, to really, really uh, rock the board of the West Indians as uh, he bowled four overs. Uh, uh, giving away seven runs and all those seven runs were just single scoring stroke there were no boundaries or anything and he took three wickets for seven runs on a very very memorable t20 debut and there were no prices for guessing he was the man of the match so that restricted that enabled the west indies to be uh, uh, restricted to 111 for eight and pakistan actually won the match by six wickets which I'll be briefly talking about, no doubt about it. But uh, definitely, I'll be first uh, going towards, and also tomorrow, there's also one more news that I can share that tomorrow, uh, it is going to be the second One Day International, which is coming up, uh, the second uh, One Day International, which is coming up between, Pak between Sri Lanka and Bangladesh. As you know, the first One Day was won by Bangladesh, and Bangladesh said they are looking up absolutely a changed side now, so Sri Lankans better watch out in the second One Day International. And also the Australian pace bowler who has been, I mean he, he was a, such a express pace bowler and there was a lot of hopes on this bloke Sean Tate but unfortunately Sean Tate is burnt out in the sense uh, he has been, uh, he, he has not played a lot of tests at all 
but now a time has come Ashanti at the age of 34 has decided as to say sayonara to international cricket so he basically has retired from international cricket at the age of 34 uh, it was very sad that Sean Tate uh, when he came on to the uh, international test scene uh, he was one who had uh, who had once bowled a delivery at 161 kph so definitely uh, he was one of a great prospects but unfortunately due to the injury problems he suffered as a pace bowler he could not play a lot of matches which was pretty sad and uh, finally he has, br- he, has br- he, has, uh, he has brought the curtain down on his international career by retiring from all forms of cricket well I'll, I'll, so these are the things but definitely i'm going to start off with the india versus australia game because that is the one which is holding a lot of interest so let's see as to what happened there on the on the third day as you know uh, there is still two days play left in this match so australia resumed their on their overnight score uh, with um, it was no not in fact it was sorry it was the indians who were uh, there yesterday and uh, ridhiman sah and jadeja were the crease and thanks to this particular pair of Jadeja and Ridhiman Saha the score really really moved on in fact it was a very very valuable partnership which enabled India to take the lead it was a 96 run partnership between Ravindra Jadeja and and Ridhiman Saha Saha was more of a sedate self but Ravindra Jadeja was never going any opportunities are begging where he could play those aggressive strokes of his which were hit for boundaries and sixes in fact he had four fours and four sixes uh, in a knock of 63 uh, in his knock and Ridhiman Saha was the sedate partner in fact uh, Cummins actually uh, forced Jadeja to go for a hook shot and in the process he missed it and he lost his stump so he was gone for 63 very important knock from Ravindra Jadeja and Ridhiman Saha's contribution was 31 his wicket also going to Cummins 31 two boundaries and then the tail was cleaned up very quickly Kumar not uh, Kuldeep Yadav 7 Uven Shadav was not on 2 and the Indian innings came to an end at 332 but thanks to that uh, partnership between Jadeja and Saha India uh, managed to reach uh, 332 and thus take a very slender lead of 32 runs as far as the bowling was concerned Nathan Lyon went on to pick up a 5 wicket back 34.1 overs 5 minutes 92 runs and 5 wickets for Nathan Lyon um, uh, Josh says 25 overs 8 minutes 51 runs on 1 wicket Cummins was among the wickets as well 30 overs 8 minutes 94 runs on 3 wickets I, I thought he bowled well uh, Keefe had 1 for 75 and as far as the Aussies were concerned now this is the real story 32 runs in the lead India uh, trailing by 32 runs Australia started their reply but probably they, they probably would have never expected this that you know uh, that uh, Bhuvneshwar Kumar and Numeesh Yadav with the red cherry were posing a lot of problems uh, to the openers in fact uh, there was one of the deliveries from Bhuvneshu Kumar actually hit David Warner on his shoulder and it was a tremendous spell of pace bowling from Umesh Yadav he was looking he was looking very very pacey at the other end Bhuvneshwar Kumar was bowling some testing lines and Matt Trenshaw David Warner uh, had to be really really being careful and then finally the breakthrough came because of that relentless uh, effort that Umesh Kumar, Umesh Yadav was putting, he actually uh, got the wicket of um, uh, the first wicket to go was David Warner, uh, who was actually caught by Saha of the bowling of Umesh Yadav for six with one boundary. And then the next go was Steven Smith. Now, this was a big wicket. Uh, Matt Renshaw uh, was uh, really, really uh, trying to dig himself at the crease when Steven Smith joined him. Steven Smith played a played a uh, played a few good strokes and after that it was Bhuvaneshwar Kumar who actually went on to clean bowl uh, Stephen Smith for 17 with three boundaries made it 31 for two and then Renshaw was forced to play at a short delivery from Umesh Yadav and he nicked it into the hands of Saha behind the stumps he was gone for eight with two boundaries and definitely Umesh Yadav uh, in particular and Bhuvaneshwar Kumar both were sowing doubts in the batsmen's minds as to how the ball is going to move not only that there was a bit of pace as far as Umesh Yadav was concerned he was bowling with great control and he was also um, I would say he was totally controlling the Australian innings with his bowling and he was really really getting the ball uh, to uh, um, uh, getting the ball to really go at some very good pace after that 
Uh, after that, once um, Yadav and Kumar had done their job, <coughs> the spinners got into action. It started off with uh, the next wicket being Hanscom, uh, who was uh, caught by Rahane of the bowling of Ashwin, uh, where uh, Ashwin definitely uh, forced Hanscom uh, in his effort. Hanscom was gone for 18 three boundaries. They were also really, really struggling. And then Glenn Maxwell came out and he decided that he's not going to be the one who's going to take a back seat. And he went after the bowlers. But in the process, Ravindra Jadeja picked up the wicket of Sean Marsh, who was struggling. He was gone for one. And then uh, he picked up, uh, and then Maxwell himself, uh, after doing a bit of uh, real uh, good hitting there, making 45, 6 fours and 1 6, finally fell a victim uh, as he wanted to up the tempo of the Australian innings. He was gone, a little bit bold, Ashwin, <laughs> for 45. Uh, and then uh, it was uh, Cummins uh, making 12. And then Jadeja uh, picked up a few wickets as well. He picked up the wicket of Cummins for 12. Uh, Steve O'Keefe was a victim of uh, Jadeja for duck. Nathan Lyon fell to Yadav for not. Uh, and Hazelwood was LBW bowl Ashwin. Leaving Matthew Wade not out uh, in, uh, in a forlorn manner. 25 not out. 2 fours and 1 6. And the Aussie innings coming to an end at 137 all out. Thus setting the Indians uh, a, a target of 105 runs for victory. And uh, the, looking at the bowling, look at that bowling analysis from Umesh Yadav. 10 overs, 3 maidens, 29 runs and 2, 3 wickets. And he has also got the most number of wickets, uh, I reckon, in a, in a season. Uh, that is uh, pretty good going from Umesh Yadav. He's really coming of age as a pace bowler, according to me now. Bhuvaneshwar Kumar, 7 overs, 1 for 27. Kuldeep Yadav could not pick up the wickets. They probably had a game plan against Kuldeep Yadav in the second innings which really, um, really came, came up well for the Aussies. And Ravindra Jadha, eight, 18 over 7 maidens, 3 for 24. Ashwin got amongst the wickets as well, 13.5 over 4 maidens, 29 runs and 3 wickets. It was very difficult for the Aussies because not only was the relentless uh, pace bowling from Mohan Shadow and the swing and seam of Bhuvanesh Kumar, but all those spinners, except the exception of Kuldeep Yadav, Jadeja and Ashwin, really weaving a web around the Aussie batsmen and forcing them to think a lot uh, when playing and then finally uh, that was the outcome 137 all out the Aussies setting the Indians um, 105 runs to win the match and uh, the Indian innings started uh, with uh, KL Rahul uh, not shy of playing his strokes uh, he, he he was not out on 13 at close of play uh, with three boundaries Mudli Vijay was not out on six as India closed the day at 19 for no loss after playing six overs and now they'll be resuming on the morrow and their eyes will be on the border Gavaskar trophy which is 87 runs away from India now whether the Aussies can really pull off a miracle here uh, by actually bowling out the Indians so that is the only way that the Aussies can win otherwise India uh, one could say that India would have won the border Gavaskar trophy and time is not a constraint at all there's a lot of time in this match there are full two full days left in the match so it's not a constraint at all as far as uh, the bowling figures come in uh, 3 overs, 1 and for 14. Hazelwood, 2 overs for 5. Steve O'Keefe, and there was also a bit of uh, real uh, chitter chatter going on uh, when the Indians were playing with uh, a few words being spoken. Yes, that is something we know that um, they, these, these tactics will be resorted to uh, just to uh, really shake the morale of the batsmen. And definitely, this is something expected, but I said it's always friendly banter. So, but it was uh, something uh, which, uh, which has been ha regularly happening in this series. But definitely, that really makes the makes cricket uh, more entertaining and interesting. No doubt about that. As far as it is a friendly banter, so that is as far as uh, the India. So India definitely eyeing victory here, 87 runs away from uh, taking the Border Gavaskar Trophy. So the next match that I'm going to talk about is the first T20. As I said, the first T20 which was played uh, between Pakistan and West Indies. Uh, the West Indies were totally, totally befuddled uh, by a young bowler by the name. They, Pakistan surprised by actually blooding him in the first match itself and what a debut for this youngster uh, Shadab Khan. Uh, he is a leg spinner, right arm leg spinner and he totally, as I said, befuddled the West Indian batsmen. They probably didn't even expect that. Uh, things were going on uh, pretty steadily uh, in two overs. They had added 13 with Lewis and Walton in the crease. But once uh, uh, the once Ahmed Shahzad uh, showed some good reflexes in running out uh, even Lewis for 10. Now after that, Shadab Khan taking over 
uh, he got uh, Walton Walton I mean they were not able to uh, read the wrong one uh, the googly and the one which was uh, not spinning away uh, and um, um, Shadab Khan uh, definitely looks a good talent he picked up the wicket of uh, Walton for 18 with 1416 Sam and then he also picked up Lendl Simmons by clean bowling him for one Samuels went to the victim uh, to Imad Wazim for seven uh, Pollard uh, tried his bet but again uh, it was a big problem for Pollard too he was gone for 14 to the bowling of Barbrias due to the pressure being built by Shadab Khan Sunil Narin fell to Shadab Khan for one Pavel Fai but Brathwaite the captain was the one uh, who stayed there till the end uh, with some um, uh, with some uh, at least he managed to actually get the West Indians past the 100 score uh, with 111 for 8 Brathwaite was not on 34 27 Dalvis 2 fours, 2 sixes Jason Holder 14 of 12 2 fours. the bowling Shadab Khan look at the bowling figures what a memorable debut for this youngster four overs Red Amlek spinner uh, making his uh, T20 debut four overs he gave away just seven runs and he picked up three wickets that is absolute gold I would say and to give four bowl four overs on your test debut and give away just seven runs and also pick up three wickets is something it's a memorable debut and he was the name man of the match was rightly so Imad Wazim 1 for 12, Mohamed Afiz bowled 1 over for 8, Sohil Tanveer 1 for 21, Hassan Ali 1 for 25, 1 for 35, Varhan Briyaz. Pakistan were given a target of 112 to face and uh, Kamran Akmal who opened the innings uh, contributed 22 of 17, 3 4 1 6, Shahzad making 13 of as many balls, Babar Azam uh, played a good knock 29, 3 boundaries, uh, Afiz was uh, cheaply dismissed for 5 and uh, the West Indies could not do anything that Shadab Khan could do as uh, Pakistan with Shoaib Malik not out on 38 uh, of 29, 3 fours, one second, Sarfaz Ahmed the captain not out on 4, it was all over, uh, Pakistan uh, winning the match by the first uh, T20 of the 4 match series being won by Pakistan, uh, by they won it by 6 wickets, as far as the bowling is concerned, Badri 1 for 24, 2 for 27 for Jason Holder, none for 22 Nareen, 1 for 18 Brathwaite, none for 14 Williams and Pollard bowled 1 for 10. So, and also they had uh, a debut for Roman Powell as, as well. Roman Powell failed on his uh, T20 debut, but he's too good a player to fail. I think uh, he's, a, he's a really good talent and probably one would definitely see Roman Powell come into his own as what he was doing in the Caribbean Premier League. Uh, and that's the precise reason he's figuring in this particular team. Now, uh, taking you down to the match between New Zealand and South Africa, uh, day four here, lunchtime right now. Uh, Kane Williamson played a very very good hand uh, in this uh, particular innings which I'll be talking about so basically it was Kane Williamson who actually blunted the South African attack uh, today and uh, he did a very good job but then finally uh, fell to a, he scored a big hundred actually probably would have definitely eyed a double century but unfortunately you couldn't get it uh, Santner gave him good company uh, to make 41 and that was the precise reason uh, this uh, New Zealand could take a lead of 83 in fact they're 83 runs in the lead right now they still have four wickets to go so South Africa still have their task cut out here and Colin Granholm uh, is the one who would be joining Santon as uh, they took the took lunch uh, absolutely at the dismissal of Mitchell Santner uh, and uh, as you know uh, this is going to be very interesting because uh, it's lunch on day four so uh, definitely uh, New Zealand would probably uh, eye some quick runs here and they, and they probably might uh, uh, whether they're going to declare or whether they're going to wait and set a target because uh, New Zealand uh, if at all they have to win this uh, draw the, at least they have an opportunity uh, to go and actually uh, square the series now whether uh, it is something uh, whether the New Zealand are going to throw the gauntlet uh, and the South Africans are going to accept that is the uh, moot point here now as far as uh, uh, so yesterday as I said the South Africans uh, making 3 and 14 that was known but as far as New Zealand was concerned were concerned uh, Tom Latham uh, was out for 50 so that was a refreshing form for him with 10 fours G travel um, showing I mean that was a big partnership that happened between New Zealand's uh, left hand batsman uh, G travel and Kane Williamson as they added some valuable runs in fact it was a big partnership which added 190 runs for the second wicket with G travel contributing 88 with 10 boundaries he played very well uh, he really played according very in, a, in a very nice manner in a very mature fashion and this was his highest score uh, in test cricket 
Uh, Kane Williamson, as I said, he went on to score a big 100. Uh, probably would have got a double century, but as I said, he tried to play a hook shot at the bowling of Markle. The ball top edge, Philander taking the catch, and Williamson's uh, contribution being 176. It's 16 fours and three sixes. Uh, Rabada actually uh, picked up two quick wickets yesterday uh, before the play ended on uh, day three when he actually cleaned up uh, Broom by getting him LBW for 12 and then got Henry Nichols caught behind for naught. And today uh, Rabada picked up his uh, third wicket uh, as uh, he picked up the wicket of Mitchell Santner who did a good job of giving company to uh, Kane Williamson as he was out for 41. As I said right now as I'm talking to you it's lunchtime here at Seddon Park in Hamilton on the fourth day. Uh, with um, with New Zealand uh, currently at 397 for 6, 83 runs ahead. Uh, Watling is not out on 6 and Colin Grandholm uh, will be joining the wicket takers. Markel and Rabada have been the ones who have been amongst the wickets. They are the ones who have shared the 6 wickets here. They have shared 3 wickets uh, each year. Uh, well dear fan subscribers, uh, as I said, I have already told you that the Aussie uh, Express Space bowler Sean Tate uh, has said goodbye to international cricket. Uh, but nevertheless, one felt sorry for him as he came in. I mean, he came in. Um, uh, I mean, he, he came with uh, lots of pomp, no doubt about it. But unfortunately, due to the injury, uh, as fast bowlers normally tend to suffer, as we all know, uh, he was the one. He was really genuinely quick, and was very sad to see. Uh, one only hopes that you know uh, Cummins is another good bowler that Aussies have got, who has just started um, his bowling with great control as well. One only hopes that Pat Cummins does not uh, really burn because for fast bowlers it's always uh, uh, it's, it's always uh, very important uh, to look at their fitness because uh, they tend to get burnt out very quickly because of the extra load that they take uh, while hurling the ball at such speeds. Well, dear fan subscribers, I have nothing else to share. Uh, it's all over as far as today's cricket happening show is concerned, and it's good night from my studios. Thank you.